what we're now seeing is that this is the end of the last vestiges of European social democracy and the very same policies that the IMF and World Bank, the structural adjustment and, and Washington consensus policies that they imposed on the global south for decades are now coming home to Europe itself. But um, I, I do want to talk about something very, very related. I mean, I'm glad you mentioned the German foreign minister Baerbach's comments in at this conference in, in the Czech Republic, where she said, what's important for us is this war on Russia and supporting Ukraine, regardless of what voters want. Now, Ukraine itself is being subjected to these same neoliberal shock therapy policies. And a friend of mine, a Canadian activist and writer, Jake Callio, and I wrote an article uh, over at multipolarista.com, uh, and it's titled, West Prepares to Plunder Post-War Ukraine with Neoliberal Shock Therapy, Privatization, Deregulation, Slashing Worker Protections. This is a conference that was held this July in Switzerland called the Ukraine Recovery Conference in which, which a bunch of Western governments and corporate leaders met together to plan neoliberal shock therapy to impose on Ukraine. And we couldn't have seen a more blatant symbol of this than the fact that Ukraine's Western-backed leader, Zelensky, on September 6th, he opened the bell digitally, at least via Zoom in the morning, at the New York Stock Exchange. And I mean, it's really incredible. There's photos here. It says so much, Advan hashtag advantage Ukraine, the slogan, we are free, we are strong, we are open for business. And if you read what the, the financial press is saying about this, this is from this website, Business Wire. Uh, President Zelensky rings bell at New York Stock Exchange to signify Ukraine is open for business. And it notes this is a $400 billion in investment options. It spans public-private partnerships, privatization, and private ventures, a USAID-supported project team of investment bankers appointed by Ukraine's Ministry of Economy will work with businesses interested in investing. They quote the president of the New York Stock Exchange Group who said that, you know, uh, we stand for freedom, investor protection, and unfettered access to capital we are pleased to welcome President Zelensky virtually to the New York Stock Exchange bell podium, a symbol of freedom and opportunity our U.S. capital markets have enabled around the globe. So, I mean, this to me, it says everything. It points out that Ukraine has been working with the G7 and the EU to reform the country's tax system, that is cut taxes on corporations and the rich, to create a new legal framework and to adopt new rules and legislations to allow companies to build a transparent corporate structure, attract foreign investment more easily, and use additional mechanisms to protect intangible assets. So, I mean, honestly, what they're announcing is a massive corporate giveaway. What, what do you think about this policy of Ukraine being open for business? Well, it certainly didn't say uh, everything. What every, uh, the day that... Uh... Uh, after Labor Day, significantly, uh, Tuesday on September 6th, the day that uh, Zelensky rang the bell at the stock exchange, he had an editorial in the Wall Street Journal that did say everything. He said, what we've done is abolish the right of labor to join labor unions. We have abolished the right of uh, uh, collective bargaining. Uh, uh, every... Uh, a wage agreement is going to be an individual choice between the worker and the employer. That's a fair market. Uh, the, uh, we're abolishing all of labor's rights that are in the Constitution. We are rejecting the uh, uh, European Union uh, labor laws. We are rejecting everything that the uh, UN International Labor Organization said. Uh, uh, labor, we have reduced labor under the new law that I have just passed to absolute uh, abject dependency. So if you uh, work in Ukraine, not only are we going to give you uh, whatever uh, uh, the kleptocrats, uh, you can uh, buy from the kleptocrats, giving them an appropriate markup uh, and owning it, but uh, you will have a completely docile labor force such as no country has seen since uh, the era of Pinochet. Uh, I, and you, you've got to read the Wall Street Journal uh, editorial. It's jaw-dropping. Drop, it is uh, uh, absolutely, uh, 
you can, it, it's like a parody of what a socialist would have uh, written about how the class war would be put in uh, into action by uh, a, a fascist uh, government. Uh, it, th this is literally what fascism is. So of course he, he was welcomed on the stock exchange for, for abolishing labor's rights. You could not have a more black and white uh, uh, example from than uh, what you just pointed out. Yeah, and. I mean, it's it's really sad considering that Ukraine already is the poorest country in Europe and it's one of the most corrupt countries in Europe, even according to these metrics of like Western government backed organizations. So we've seen that after the overthrow of the Soviet Union in 1991, that the, in, in Russia in particular, there was this brutal neoliberal shock therapy. Gorbachev just died. You know, he he helped bring this in. Gorbachev did this famous Pizza Hut commercial, basically showing that he, you know, he sold out his country for Pizza Hut. And we saw that under Yeltsin, this alcoholic U.S. puppet in Russia, the life expectancy of Russians de decreased by several years. According to UNICEF, millions of Russians died in excess deaths because of the neoliberal shock therapy imposed on Russia. And of course, Ukraine suffered, but the neoliberalist, neoliberal therapy, shock therapy imposed on Ukraine wasn't as severe as it was on Russia. And there still are some state-owned assets in Ukraine that all of these Western corporations are just frothing at the bit. They're, you know, they're salivating about trying to get their hooks into and to privatize all of these assets. So this is a country that is already the poorest in Europe. It's already one of the most corrupt countries on earth. It has a massive problem with far-right extremism. And now it's being flooded with $40 billion of weapons just from the US, billions of dollars more weapons from Europe. I mean, this seems like such a massive powder keg. I can't even imagine how disastrous it'll be. Considering the effect of the neoliberal shock therapy imposed on Chile, you mentioned under Pinochet, the neoliberal shock therapy imposed on Russia and the disastrous consequences. I mean, can you what do you think this is going to do not only to Ukraine but to Europe? Well, this is exactly what uh, uh Mr. Macron said when he said the end of affluence. Uh, the Ukrainian uh labor force has just uh, experienced uh, the end of affluence uh in uh neoliberal style. Uh, and as uh Mr. Zelensky said, uh, the it may be the end of affluence for the labor force, but it's going to be a bonanza for you uh investors in the New York Stock Exchange. Come on in, join the party. Uh, for uh, somebody's loss is turned into somebody else's gain, uh, and that's what happens in uh, a class war. That's a zero sum sum game. There's uh, no attempt at all to raise uh, living standards, and uh, well, the problem uh, you said uh, Ukraine is uh, the poorest country in Europe, but Zelensky said it's not poor enough. He said, you think this is something? Uh, wait, wait till our new law takes effect. That'll really show you what it means to be the poorest country in Europe. Uh, but it'll also be the richest country uh, in Europe for the uh, 1%, because uh, uh, the, uh, as you just pointed out, the, uh, the kleptocrat class there was uh, uh, the most corrupt. I've, I've met some of them, and uh, uh, it's, uh, it's an experience.